How are you doing? Uh, delighted to be here uh, for our first lesson for the Online Academy of Irish Music. And I'm Kevin Crawford. Uh, I'm going to be teaching you a number of tunes, hopefully sending across a few pointers, a few tips along the way as well. Our first tune uh, is a jig and it's a version of um, a tune known as Merrily Kiss the Quaker but it's a, a sister version if you like, it's called The Quaker's Wife and uh, it's a two-part double jig so I'll play it through for you a couple of times <laughs> the Quaker's Wife played through a couple of times we'll um, break it down now into phrase by phrase or line by line as I like to call it and um, we'll start with the first line of the first part three and again after four three Four. Second line of the first part. After four again. Three, four. Third line, first part, three, four. After four, three, four. And the fourth line of the first part. After four, three, four. Okay, now that remains the same on the repeat except for the last phrase. Instead of us going, we just play a G, have a breath, and then a B link into the second part. So in the context of the, the tune, the last line becomes as opposed to and that's the first part all broken down. I'll play the first part through for you uh, with the repeat so you get another chance to hear what I'm talking about with the, the difference of phrase at the end. Okay, 
that's uh, the first part done and dusted. We'll move on to the second part for you now. And uh, we'll start with the first line of the second part. Three, four. After four again, three, four. Second line, second part. Uh, second line, second part. And again after four. Three, four. Third line, second part. Three, four. After four again, three, four. And the fourth line, three, four. After four again, three, four. Okay, there are four lines. Again, the same thing occurs, you just change the phrase at the end. So, obviously that first time round there, the fourth line of the B part ends with your GB, because we're going back into the second part. And then at the end, just as you're about to go back into the first part, you go back to your GAGD phrase. So it's Okay, apart from that, uh, essentially it stays the same. Um, there's just one variant in there, and you'll have heard it when I played the tune through at the beginning. The first line uh, on the repeat of the second part is changed to... as opposed to the first time round, which is... Okay, quite a simple little switch, but effective nonetheless when it kicks in. So, we'll just take a look at some of the, the little things throughout the tune that might uh, complicate uh, issues for us initially. It's not a tough tune. Again, a lot of the focus is on sound, okay? It's the first tune we're doing, uh, and I'd like to focus mainly on the tone and achieving a nice, uh, balanced, kind of range of notes. I don't particularly want some notes to be louder than the others. Um, so even when I go down to that bottom D, which occurs quite a lot on it, I'd like it to be the same volume as like the GAB that have gone before it. Um, and that's just again a matter of getting used to your instrument, a matter of pitching it correctly and embouchure work so that you don't have to blow like crazy to achieve that bottom D, um, which sometimes just appears out of balance with the the uh, the volume of the rest of the notes on the flute. So the first line, there's only one little cut in there, and it's on the last phrase, and it goes. Okay, so it's. And if you can get it to kind of just dance like that, even on its own, if you isolate it from the tune and just get used to so that when you pick it up to speed it'll just kind of bounce along and give the tune a nice momentum at that particular point. Um, something similar happens again but with a different set of notes on the fourth line of that first part. So um, it makes sense in terms of the, the balance of phrases. So it's like a call and answer again. First line finishes with the last phrase of the first part, first time around, ends with So you're popping the G Okay, so 
okay? And they're the only two real kind of pointers that occur uh, throughout the first part. The rest, as I say, is all to do with tone and tuning. Um, second part, however, we do look at, at a couple of other elements. And it's our first little look at um, articulation. Uh, we don't kind of overuse it uh, within this tune. We're only articulating two notes. Uh, some of the other tunes we'll look at later on have multiple articulation kind of going on throughout. Uh, this one we just want to achieve two Bs, okay? And we're not cutting or popping as you may be more traditionally used to. So on the first and third phrase of the first line, second part, it becomes And you can even see it there, it's, it's a throat uh, technique, okay? And all I'm doing is it's like just stopping and starting the flow of air by creating a little blockage there with the throat. Uh, it's almost, if you like, like the start of, of a cough. If you were to start, <laughs> it's just the making of that. And that's the type of a sound we try to achieve when we're articulating single notes in that fashion. So it's... And it's got a much more uh, rhythmical kind of value than just going okay which has its place as well in other tunes I'm, I don't want you to kind of forget about that particular ornament or technique but this one in the right place it has a a, a big contribution to make so and again So second line then of the second part, the only variant there is 